Hey, what's up guys? This video, we'll have a look at some fuses and how they behave in high currents. So I'm gonna connect these fuses to my big capacitor and see what happens. I will have a test voltage of nearly 200 volts, maybe 230 volts or 240 volts and dump the lot of current and the voltage right in the fuses and see what happens. Here I got a small 6.3 amp fuse in the fuse holder. This is a 10 amp fuse, long cartridge fuse like this one. Both 10 amps. I'm going to test both of them. 10 amp automatic fuse. And maybe if I'm brave enough, 10 amp diaz fuse. Yes, red is 10 amp. Red bottom in there as well. So let's see what happens. And now everything is in place. There's a fuse. And uh, let's turn it on. Voltage rises very slowly. Off the way. There you can see the ballast light bulbs. Voltmeter. And another voltmeter just for safety. So we are there and now I'm going to discharge it. I wonder where the fuse went. Holy cow. 150 volts left in that. It's actually discharging into the through the light bulb at the moment. Look at that. That's why it's so important to have correct fuses in the multimeters. And here we got a bigger fuse. Higher rupture current on that one. Let's see what this one says. Same test voltage, 200 volts. That looks good. Now I'm gonna pull the trigger once again. And this one didn't explode. Because it's a bit blackened. I don't think there's so much to the other one because it's the same fuse inside that. So we go to the automatic fuse. Automatic fuse in place. 10 amp. Yeah, soon up to right voltage. I hope I find all the intestines of that after I popped it. So yes, let's pull the trigger. That was lots of stuff going out of that. I think I blow my connection. And I tripped the fuse. And for extra content, I got that car fuse. After that, we'll go to the DZ fuse. So let's see what I. 12, 24 volt car fuse can handle. We see it breaks in 200 volts. It can break 200 volts. That smoked a lot. Mmm. Here we got it. Not so much contacts left. 
So here we got the Dyset set fuse. It had this protective shield around it so it doesn't throw its intestines everywhere. 10 amps. I think the maximum current for these fuses were 6 kiloamps. So let's see if it goes over that. Let's pull the trigger and figure it out. I think it handled it. Most real reliable fuse. Yes, that fuse handled it best of all the other fuses. Water is sinking. It's runs through that halogen lamp. Let's have a look on the aftermath. So here we got the first fuse that I popped. It was one of these, these fuses here. The holder looks like this. And the only thing that I found from the fuse was its end cap. I didn't find any other things from it. Here's the other part that was supposed to be there. No glass, I didn't find the other end cap. And most interestingly, look at the shape of that. I think there was a little bit too much current flowing through that. And here was the next fuse. The holder looks surprisingly good. Nothing happened with that. And the actual fuse is a bit blackened. Down there, I wonder, no, I can't get it off. But this fuse is pretty good. It could handle the high current without exploding like the other one. That's why it's very important to have uh, the correct fuses in the multimeters if something goes wrong. And this was the extra content fuse. It looks extremely blackened because it just made for 24, maximum 24 volts fuse is arced a bit that's why the legs are gone like that and if you look inside the actual metal inside there has actually evaporated it's nothing left in there it's a nice arc flash in that surprisingly it didn't explode because it has this little vent hole here so Heat, hot gases can escape. And this one was the automatic fuse or circuit breaker. I think the contacts arced. Because we got a lot of damage on the actual contacts. We got, got bad contact there. It didn't explode. But actually it triggered open. So I'm going to reset that. No, I can't reset that. It's a completely blown inside. Let's do an autopsy. So here I have opened it up. You can see the guts of it. Here's the other part. It's a bit blackened. Yeah, I'm going to manage to get something out of there. You can see this part. The actual contacts. It's actually blown to bits, there's a huge hole in that an arc flash occurred there because this thing doesn't have, doesn't have any arc shoot it's obviously arced, that's actually by metal a bit magnetic I can remove the contacts from here you see how that looks something has arced right in there with metal residue left and the other contact has a stuck. Yes, that contact has melted in there, but you can see. Lots of current passed through that. 
but it didn't explode and that's the important thing and here's actually the reset button a lot of metal residue on that the metal evaporated and condensed on that cold plastic and here we got the diaz fuse let's open it up looks pretty good in there there's the fuse looks good in there as well there got the red dot some sand so the nice thing with the that fuses is that the red dot on the bottom there actually came off so you can see if the fuse has blown let's have a look inside Looks like surprisingly good here. So look at the sand. And there we got the metal. You see here this one has completely melted. It only looks like this if there had been a lot of current passing through it. There's the other part here, a bit blackened over there, that looks pretty good, that's much dark, that part low directly, and the fuse is intact, it's very thick ceramic. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.